Let's extend our work with derivatives to include what's called the chain rule. And I've written the chain rule over here. If y is a function of u and u is a function of x, then we can differentiate y with respect to x this way. We find the derivative of y with respect to u, and then we multiply that by the derivative of u with respect to x. So, for instance, if we had y was u to the fifth and u was a function of x, then the derivative of y with respect to x would be dy du. So here I differentiate with respect to u, which just means I take the exponent out in front, then subtract one from it, then I differentiate the base, dy d, or I'm sorry, du dx. Let's try an example. Suppose that y is equal to 5x cubed plus 4x squared in parentheses all raised to the fifth, and I want to differentiate with respect to x. So the derivative of y with respect to x is going to be, okay, that exponent comes out in front, so I'll have 5 times that base, I don't change the base at all, 5x cubed plus 4x squared, all raised to a power 1 less, 4, and then I differentiate the base. So now I have to differentiate 5x cubed plus 4x squared with respect to x. So that's going to be 15x squared plus 8x. Okay, so let's see what this looks like. How about 5 times 15x squared plus 8x times 5x cubed plus 4x squared all to the fourth, and I don't know, I might look in the back of the book at this point and see what answer they have back there, see if you need to factor an x out or anything like that. But the point is with the chain rule, and you, when you have exponents like this, some base raised to the fifth power. Okay, it's going to be that exponent times the base, don't change it, to a power one less, then you differentiate the base. This is the du dx part of the chain rule. So the chain rule isn't, we don't, we don't usually get functions written in this form this way, like this. What the chain rule does, it just gives us a way to look at functions we already have and be able to extend our um, rules that we have for differentiation. So this looks le just like a function of x, but we're thinking of it as u to the fifth power and then u itself being a function of x so we can fit it in with this chain rule right here. All right, let's try another problem. I have y is equal to x to the fifth power. Okay, I'll use the chain rule. The derivative of y with respect to x is going to be 5x to the fourth times the derivative of x, the base, with respect to x. But the derivative of x with respect to x, that's just 1. So this comes out 5x to the fourth. So nothing's changed. I mean, all the things we knew about differentiation before with exponents like this, it's still the same. So I look at it this way. I always apply the chain rule. I don't look for things where the chain rule applies or doesn't apply. I always differentiate this base right here. So it's 5x to the fourth times the derivative of the base, which is 1. So it just ends up 5x to the fourth. Let's go on and try a couple more problems here. Okay, here I have y equals x squared plus 1 to the 100th power. Okay, I can apply my chain rule and say this. The derivative of y with respect to x is going to be that exponent, 100, times the base, x squared plus 1, don't change the base yet, to a power 1 less, 99. Now you differentiate the base to get just 2x. So how about this? 200x times x squared plus 1 to the 99th. Okay, so we can differentiate some pretty complicated expressions here with the chain rule, and with the chain rule, all we end up doing is applying the rules we already have. Let's look at another problem. f of x equals square root 4 plus 3x. How about this? I'll write this as f of x equals 4 plus 3x all to the 1 half power. Okay, so I'll just change the square root to a 1 half so I can apply my... Uh, exponent property for derivatives, and then now I have f prime of x will be 1 half, that's the exponent, don't change the base, 4 plus 3x, power 1 less, minus 1 half, times the derivative of the base, now I differentiate and get 3. Okay, how about if I write it this way, 3 over 2 square root 4 plus 3x. So, 
this quantity right here to the negative one half is the same as its reciprocal to the positive one half, and that positive one half is an exponent that goes back to a square root like this. So I look, this is what I try to do. If my original problem is written in terms of square roots, try to write the answer in terms of square roots if that's easy to do. But you might want to look in the back of your book and see uh, what the answer is at this point. Let's work a couple more problems. Problem 5, I have g of t is 1 over this quantity right here. Let's write it with a negative exponent to start with so I can apply that same exponent rule. How about t to the fourth plus 1 all to the negative third power? Okay, now I'm ready to differentiate using my chain rule, but I'm just going to use my exponent rule and just continue differentiating until I've differentiated everything. Differentiating that base, and then if that base had another base, I would do that. Okay, so g prime of t, and it's okay to just say g prime of t because when I'm using function notation, I know g is a function of t, so when I write g prime, I know I'm differentiating with respect to t. All right, so this will be negative 3 times t to the fourth plus 1, don't change the base, power 1 less, minus 4. Now I'll differentiate that base and get 4t cubed plus 0, which is 4t cubed. All right, so that's my chain rule right there. I just differentiate the base. Now let's see if we can simplify this a little bit. What do we have here? Negative 12t cubed, and then I'll just write this with a positive exponent, t to the fourth plus 1, all raised to the fourth power. Okay, so not bad. Where I see students make mistakes is they'll put this derivative of this base right here. That's a mistake. It's Take that exponent out in front, reduce the exponent by 1, don't change the base, then multiply by the derivative of the base. Let's try one more problem. Uh, okay, so it looks like I'm out of time on this, so what I'm going to do is put the next problem on the next video, so you're going to see one that's calculus chain rule 2. So look for that one, I'll do another one of these problems, and a few more after that.